Well, welcome back to Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I'm Jason Bowman, and I love cars. Sorry for the long hiatus. Jackie and I spent our time away playing with cars. You may have noticed there was no Saab NG900 video game intro. Oddly, the only NG900 in a video game I could find was a 1998 Swedish driver's education game. Anyway, today I'm going to tell you my story of the Saab NG900. Hope you enjoy it. As many of you know, I am new to the Saab world and I am learning as I go. My plan was to do a Saab 9.3 video to follow up my highly successful Saab 900 and Saab 9000 videos. Well, highly successful is a relative term for an upstart YouTube channel, which means the videos were viewed by a few more people rather than just my cat. I began researching the 9.3 and realized my story of the Saab 900 was incomplete. My original Saab 900 video focused on the classic and omitted the new generation 900 entirely. On top of that, the 9.3 had two generations. That's another story. Introduction Saab fanboys commonly call the second generation new Saab 900 the NG900, NG standing for new generation. It is also referred to as the GM900, as it was built on a General Motors 2900 platform. Other cars on the GM900 platform included 93-96 Chevrolet Vectra A, 97-05 Chevrolet Vectra B, 90-97 Holden Calibra, 96-02 Holden Vectra, 90-97 Opel Calibra, 88 to 95 Opel Vectra A, 95 to 02 Opel Vectra B, 98 to 02 Saab 93, 97 to 09 Saab 95, 00 to 05 Saturn L series, 1990 to 1997 Vauxhall Calibra. 88 to 95 Vauxhall Cavalier Mark III, 95 to 02 Vauxhall Vectra, 12 to 16 Sonova D70. The NG900 replaced the classic first generation Saab 900. I also have a video on that model. The NG900 was produced between 1994 to mid 1998. In the middle of 1998, the NG900 received over 1,100 improvements and was renamed the Saab 93 in most markets. For reasons, the Swedes made the Americans wait until 1999 for the Saab 93. Saab NG900 Innovations Sensonic If you thought Sensonic was a good name for an electronic music producer or a bathroom fan with a Bluetooth speaker, you'd be right. It was also a Fishtail and Sack developed clutch pedalless manual transmission that was available on the Saab NG900 turbo model. These models had a stick shift like a traditional manual transmission car, but instead of a clutch pedal, sophisticated electronics were implemented which controlled the clutch much faster than your average driver. When the driver selected a gear with the stick shift, a microprocessor drove an electric motor that operated the clutch master cylinder. When the car was in gear but stationary, the clutch would release when you applied the gas pedal. If the gas or brake pedal was not pressed, a warning sounded and a visual message flashed on the dashboard display. If you hesitated for more than 7 seconds, the engine would shut off. The Sensonic clutch was discontinued with the 900 model in 1998. SID The NG900 was available with SID. No, not that SID. SID stood for Saab Information Display. The interweb was very conflicted on what SID actually did. I found a 1996 NG900 owner's manual online because I'm a huge geek. The internet confusion likely stems from three different versions of SID. SID 1 displays outside temperature and time. If the car is equipped with a Saab audio system, audio information was also displayed. SID 2 all the features of SID 1 plus 8 check functions and 2 trip computer functions. The check functions were test brake lights, brake light failure, front light failure, Rear light failure, check fan belt, washer level low, coolant level low, time for service, jackalope in the roadway detected. 
The two trip functions were calculating the distance you can travel on a current fuel level based on your last 20 minutes of driving and your average fuel consumption. SID 3. All the features of 1 and 2 plus 5 more trip computer functions. SID 3 was also described as the Saab car computer. The 5 extra functions were the ability to set audible alarms, distance to trip destination, expected arrival time, average speed, a speed warning set at 120 km per hour. Black panel. The saw black panel was a safety feature that was engaged when you push the black panel button. Inspired by aviation, because Saab, the system's intent was to lessen the interior display distraction while driving at night. In this mode, only the speedometer was visible. If you adjusted the audio controls, these would be present for 10 seconds, then fade. The check messages would still appear. The tachometer would illuminate if the revs were over 5,500 RPM and remain lit until the revs dropped below 5,500 RPM. The fuel gauge would illuminate if you had less than 15 liters of fuel. The temperature gauge would illuminate if the temperature was abnormal. Models. The NG900 was available in the following models. 900i, a four-cylinder non-turbo. S, four-cylinder non-turbo in the USA although it came turbocharged in other markets. SE, available with either the four-cylinder turbo or the V6. It came in three body styles, three-door, five-door, and convertible. Talladega. For 1997 and 98, there was also a Saab 900 Talladega, which was named after the record-breaking endurance test performed in 1996 on the Talladega Super Speedway. If this sounds familiar, it is, because a similar endurance test occurred in 1986 with Saab 9000s called a long run. This round six completely stock production NG900 set 40 international speed and endurance records. One of the most astonishing records was set by a Saab NG900 two liter turbo, covering 25,000 miles and an average speed of 140.709 miles per hour. 10 4 NASCAR scoring control, 25,000 miles on car number one. A new world. Record. The new speed mark, 140.709 miles per hour. Special editions. R900. In 1996, in Upper Franconia, Germany, Junior Uli Weinmann took 200 900SE coupes and built the first special edition model of the NG900 called the R900. The R900 was built to homologate a Group A race car. The road-going version interior was upgraded with leather Recaro sport seats, a carbon fiber dash trim kit, and aluminum pedal pads. They were all painted a special pearl black metallic with R900 duckle duckles. <laughs> they are all painted a special pearl black metallic with R900 decals above the side marker repeaters and on the rear hatch. R900s also received Zender front rear spoilers and color-coded mirror covers. The suspension featured 30mm lowering springs, matte silver 6-spoke 17-inch ATS Type 10 wheels shod with two 45-35-17 tires. Two 25-45-16 tires on 16-inch wheels were optional for pussies and those seeking a more winter-appropriate wheel and tire setup. Performance upgrades included a sporty-sounding 3-inch diameter stainless steel exhaust system. The engine was left unchanged, making 185 horsepower, although some cars got a stage 1 computer tune by Swiss Saab tuner Hirsch Performance, upping the power to 222 horsepower. Torque rose to 228 foot-pounds of torque with standard transmission and 202 foot-pounds of torque with the automatic. Yes, you heard that right. Oddly, you could order the R900 with your choice of manual, Sensonic, or even the Auto Tragic transmission. The standard transmission Hirsch Performance Tune cars accelerated from 0 to 100 km an hour, 62 miles an hour, in 7.4 seconds, down from 8 seconds in stock form. Nobody cares, but the Hirsch tuned automatic transmission cars did 0 to 62 miles per hour in 9 seconds flat, down from 9.5 seconds in stock form. Sun Beach. In Switzerland, from 96 to 1997 model years, Swiss importer Scan Cars commissioned Rinspeed, a concept specialty car builder, to produce 70 Sun Beach Special Edition 900 SE convertibles. The changes were mostly cosmetic, with cars retaining the stock 185 horsepower engine. Most of them had Saab's Sensonic transmission. The interiors featured turquoise Sun Beach embroidered headrest, turquoise carbon fiber interior trim inlays, and turquoise shifter boot and shifter knob. 
The exterior featured colors shifting Neptune turquoise metallic paint. The pearl effect paint shimmered between purple, green, and blue. The exterior also received color-coded front zender spoiler and rear view mirrors. The Sun Beach logo appeared on the wheel center caps, the trunk lid, and the quarter panels. The suspension was lowered 30 millimeters using Coney yellow dampeners and Ibox springs. The Sun Beach rode on 16 inch BBS Moda M1 wheels with 225, 45, 16 tires. Each car also came with an extra set of 16 inch alloy wheels fitted with 205, 50, 16 winter tires because Switzerland. Aero. In Italy, for the 1996 to 1997 model year, a special edition Aero was created by Italian Saab importer and distributor Sid Otto. The president of this family-run business was Eduardo Panghini. Unlike the 900 Classic, 9000, 93, or 95, there is actually no official Aero version of the NG900. The actual production number of Eduardo's Aero is unknown, but was believed to be originally set at 200 units. A goal that was not met. Sid Otto's Aero was based on either a silver metallic or solid black 900 SE or 900 Talladega Coupe. Performance upgrades included sport suspension and metallic silver Ronel Super Aero 16 wheels. The cars were all equipped with manual transmissions as Eduardo peed standing up. <laughs> Both color versions used an Eduardo gray body kit. Saab named the color in Eduardo's honor, a shade matching his favorite gray suit. The kit consisted of Zender front lip and rear hatch boiler, one piece side skirts, with separate door accent panels and color keyed mirror covers. A Aero emblem, borrowed from the Saab 9000 Aero, was placed after the 900 model designation on the rear hatch. The interiors featured a carbon fiber dash kit, black leather seats, and door cards. Mellow Yellow The Mellow Yellow Special Edition was introduced in Europe for the 1997 model year. Depending on what source you believe, RIN speed converted between 150 to 210 yellow Saab NG900 convertibles into Mellow Yellow Special Editions. The cars were painted Monte Carlo yellow with metallic titanium stripes on the bumpers, seatbelt wheel covers, and three-spoke 17-inch Antara 145 wheels. Performance modifications were limited to 215 40 17 tires and a sport suspension. The engines used were unmodified 900 SE turbo units and the cars were sold with a 50-50 split between automatic and standard transmissions. Mellow yellow Byron speed emblems adorned the wheel center caps below the left taillight, the seat belt wheel covers, and on the speedometer face. A sporty chrome round exhaust tip rounded out the exterior modifications. Interior changes included titanium accents over the SID, radio, and climate controls and window switches. The gauge faces featured yellow numbers and yellow backlighting. Each car came with a fancy matching Swiss IWC wristwatch, which is now said to be worth as much or more than the car itself. Engines. The NG900 had an unsob like conventional transverse mounted engine with a rear hinged hood, which contrasted the classic Saab 900, which had an unconventionally longitudinally mounted engine and a front hinged hood. The NG900 was available with the following engines. 2 liter B204i normally aspirated 16 bell 4 cylinder engine with 128 horsepower. A 2 liter B206i normally aspirated 16 bell 4 cylinder engine without a balance shaft, 131 horsepower. A 2 liter B204l 16 bell turbo intercooled 182 horsepower engine. A 2.3 liter B234i naturally aspirated 16 bell 4 cylinder with 148 horsepower and a 2.5 liter B258i 24 bell 54 degree V6 with 168 horsepower. Engine management duties for the turbo cars were performed by Saab's Trionic 5 system with direct ignition, SDI, and automatic performance control, APC. Trionic was an engine management system developed by Saab. Not C3PO's girlfriend, as I first thought, her name was Dot Matrix. The Tri and Trionic stood for three because it controlled three engine functions. One, ignition timing. Two, fuel injection. Three, acts as a boost controller. The ion in Trionic came from the ion current measured by the spark plugs between combustion events, which acted like a knock sensor. The NG900 also came equipped with Saab's APC, automatic performance control. This system was a sophisticated turbo boost controller that used a knock sensor, pressure transducer, control unit, and solenoid valve to control the turbocharger. The APC controlled boost pressure and the overall performance, specifically the rate in which the turbo boost came in and maximum turbo boost. It also detected knock and reduced boost levels accordingly.
performance. Motor Week tested the 1994 V6 900S and it did 0 to 60 in 7.4 and did the quarter mile in 15.8 at 91 miles an hour. Motor Week also tested the 1995 Saab 900 convertible. It did 0 to 60 in 6.9 seconds, but they neglected to do the quarter mile time. For shame. Thankfully, 0 to 60 times.com had a good spread on NG900 0 to 60 times and quarter mile times. Racing. NG900s are often drag raced. I said John had a pretty good reaction time. Uh, John is passing John. <laughs> no kidding. William shows 11. Wow, that sob took that Honda to Gapplebee's. The NG900 is great for track days. Standing mile racing in an NG900 sure looks like fun. Saab is synonymous with rally. Oddly, finding NG900 rally video clips proved difficult. In rally cross, they get a good launch from the tarmac. It is Eklund in the Saab. Hunchback grabbing second place, is he? Up the inside goes Kenneth Hansen. Mr. Clean, Kenneth Hansen in rally cross. He used to hate all this infighting. What he used to love doing was qualify well, get pole position, dive away on the green light, and then lead the race. Give him a battle to fight. And Perhaps the best use of an NG900 is to take it for a spin on a beautiful summer's day. Wait, what was that? Holy crap, another jackalope sighting! Buying an NG900. The NG900s are pretty robust, but there are a few things to look out for when buying these cars. The steering rack was mounted to the bulkhead, and cracked bulkheads caused by the strain of the rack was a common issue. Listen for steering creaks and look for cracks around the steering rack bulkhead mounting points. Thankfully, if you find a car with an undamaged bulkhead, there is an inexpensive preventative fix in the form of a rack brace kit. Those that have installed the kit claim it is transformative, tightening up the steering feel, reducing the steering slop, and greatly reducing torque steer. Many experts cite that as with any car really, 5,000 km oil changes are a must to prevent timing chain wear and, specifically in an NG900 four-cylinder engine, prevent sludging up of the oil feed to balance your shaft sprocket. The only other issue worth noting is to ensure an NG900 shifts easily into reverse as some 900s have been known to develop internal gearbox linkage issues that are possibly related to the Saab reverse gear ignition lock. J.D. Power claims a 1995 Saab 900 two-door convertible turbo is valued to be between 1,675 to 4,250 American dollars. A quick check on Marketplace confirmed these values to be pretty accurate. One thing is for sure, a Saab NG900 is a very interesting and unusual enthusiast car for not a lot of money. Thanks for watching Jason Bowman Loves Cars and my story of the Saab NG900. Hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to comment, like, and subscribe.